Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney Magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. Are you looking to plan and book an upcoming Disney vacation? Contact the Tierra Talk Show's official travel agent, James from Destinations in Florida, by visiting destinationsinflorida.com backslash tiara for a free quote. The link is also included in the show notes on our website. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Unbelievable sights. Indescribable. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, actress and voiceover artist Linda Larkin to the show. Welcome, Linda. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here, and a lot of our listeners are going to know you as the voice of Jasmine, Princess Jasmine of Agrabah from Disney's 1992 film Aladdin, or no, it was 1991. I'm now going blank here. 92, it, I think it was. It, it was, was 92, 92 when it came out. <laughs> yep. It's just so weird because it's it's been more than 20 years, and because it doesn't seem like that long ago, to be quite honest. I, does, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It feels still very, very fresh to me. And I think it's partly because we we continue to do new games and toys and Jasmine appeared in Sophia the First. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's like the magic of Disney. It It never, never grows old. I know animated films are just, it's a long, long, tedious process to just get the right sound and the right the right way to say a line that the directors want. So it must have taken a long time for the project to go forward. And, and now you're still voicing the character from almost 20 plus years ago. So what was that audition process like for Jasmine for you? It was a couple years before the movie came out when I first had an audition for it. And I didn't know much about it at all. They just sent me like two pages of a scene and it was the marketplace scene. And I was talking to a monkey and I was talking to a camel and I was talking to this guy named Aladdin and I really didn't know anything more about it. (laughs) And I, I just, I went in, I recorded it. It was just me and the casting director in the room. And then I didn't hear anything for maybe a month maybe two months, something like that. And then I got a call saying, you have a callback for Aladdin. I was like, oh, right. I, I kind of remember that. Because um, I remember I really loved what I read. Just special and, and fun to have all these, you know, it was that marketplace scene is so vibrant and, and fun. And she's pretending to be out of it for a little bit. So I went back in and then it was months Again, I didn't hear anything. And they say, you have another callback. And and so I kept going back in. I think probably it took six months from the time I auditioned till the time I got the job. And every time I went in, there were less and less people in the waiting room and more and more people in the room watching me audition. And that's putting you on the spot there, you know, a little bit. But doesn't it kind of get like the stimulation rolling for you to really do very well, right? It's a lot of pressure. And, you know, you either rise to it or you get crushed by it. (laughs) And, And honestly, like, it can go either way. And most people will have experienced both things. In that case, it just, it went my way. And... And I was I was very fortunate, and I felt really like blessed to have that opportunity. And I know over the years they've been trying a new way of recording voices with actually all the actors in the same room. If they can get everybody on their time schedule, um, was there ever a point where you got to work? Well, we we all worked together. We all got to record our scenes with each other as well as individually. So they had a clean take of everything that they wrote. And then they also had overlapping, spontaneous, improvisational takes between, you know, all of the characters who had scenes together. And for me, I only had one scene where the genie was present in the movie. 
but I got to record that scene with Robin. So it was, it was really, really exciting for me. I was a huge Robin Williams fan since I was a little girl, huge Robin fan. And I knew we were going to be in this movie together, but I didn't know that I'd ever actually be in a room with him. And we got to work together that day. It was just one day. Then we knew each other for 20 years. We were able to, you know, we did press junkets together and we would see each other at events. He was involved to some degree with my husband's theater company in New York and he would play charades with them at their fundraiser every year. And I, I got to see him and he always throw his arms wide and say, princess, like (laughs) really, really great to know him in even just a small way. And he came back to voice Jeannie in the third film, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. And there's more screen time with Jeannie and Jasmine in that, actually, because he kind of stays there back. Is. So, but we didn't work <laughs> together during that one at oh, all. Really? Like, oh, really? No. Because I, yeah. I did get to see some press junkets from that. I wish they had more of the interviews with all of you guys together, because I can't find them. That would be wonderful to see, you know. But, um, you know, I have to bring up the subject. Unfortunately, he passed away last year. But, uh, you know, he was still pretty uh, included with the Disney company because he was made a Disney legend and you were made a Disney legend. You know, you're joining the ranks with him as a Disney legend. So when was the last time you got to speak with him, you know, maybe about Aladdin or... Well, I I remember it very distinctly. Of course, I never forget any time that I spent with Robin. (laughs) His time with him was, was always really special and memorable. In 2011, uh, Robin was doing a play on Broadway called Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo. At the same time, my husband was doing a play on Broadway, and they saw each other's shows. I went to see Robin's show by myself one day, and I went backstage afterwards, and we had just a great little time together backstage in between shows. I'd seen a matinee, and he had another show that evening, so he was staying at the theater in between shows. And he was really, really sweet and congratulated me on the Legends Award, which was coming up like a month later. You know, he told me about his experience doing it and and made me laugh and made me feel less nervous about doing it. And um it was yeah, it was really special. That was that was the last time we saw each other in person. It was very, very sad when we lost him, but there has been such an outpouring of love for the character of Jeannie and for the film Aladdin. So the legacy continues to go on. And as you stated, you were part of the Disney Legends ceremony in 2011, along with some of the other singing voices and uh, talking voices of the Disney princesses. And I thought that was great. You got to introduce all of them. And uh, it was wonderful to, I was watching the live feed of the show. So it was so, it was so much fun to see all you guys up on the stage together. What a lot of fun. What was that experience like to see and get so much feedback from from the fans. That was the first time I'd ever been to D23. It was so huge. I, I had no idea what to expect, really. Like, Robin didn't really tell me how many people there were going to be there. <laughs> and it was a huge, packed auditorium. The ceremony, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think anything could have prepared me for that. But it was really great to be with the other girls who were from that era of princesses it it may never happen again like where all five of us were in one room together I I think it was so great to be able to introduce them because I don't sing so I think they were looking for a role for me in that part of the program because we all had the part where we accepted our awards and got to thank people so that was great but when it came to the singing part I you know I don't sing so not like that, not like those girls. And they said, well, we would like you to, to introduce this segment. And I was like, wow, that is really very much an honor for me to be able to stand up there and introduce these girls that I am so impressed with what they do. And I know we're all from the same era and we, we all kind of you know did the same thing, but they are incredibly talented, beautiful singers, and it was so exciting. I did a panel in Indiana this past spring with Paige O'Hara, and it was 
a really wonderful crowd, and there were so many people there who had questions for both of us, and they were questions that that Paige and I had sometimes very similar experiences and sometimes very different experiences, and it was really great even for me to hear some of Paige's stories and for Paige to hear some of mine. And we, we really, like, we, we knew more of the same people than we even realized and people who had worked on both of our movies, which, of course, we kind of knew at the time, but to revisit that now, it, it, was, it was great. This year we're doing a really special panel at D23. This is what I know so far, and I am sure this is subject to change, but they're having an Aladdin panel at D23, and for the first time probably since the movie was released on DVD in 2002, it's going to be the creators and directors, the animators, Jasmine, Aladdin, and the singing voice of Aladdin all together. This so, is so it, it'll be the first time for Scott and I to be in the same room with Ron and John and Mark Hen. And I, I, I mean, the the whole group of us together have not been in the same room That's for amazing. a decade. Oh my gosh, so. this is great. I'm well now I know what I'm gonna be signing up for. <laughs> okay. Because there's always yeah, like so different like, panels at the same time, but I definitely want to attend this one because Aladdin is such an it's something that I grew up with, so you know, I would I would really like to hear from everybody. I love it when we get the creators, the creative team and the cast together because that just shows how much time and effort you guys put into this. The, the, the film and 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 it's a spinoff since you know you guys put a lot of work we into did it. and it was really fun so it didn't feel like work but it was it was definitely a significant part of all of our lives for sure they just brought Aladdin into Broadway last year, and it was up for so many Tony nominations. It won a couple awards, which was great. Did you get a chance to finally see the show? And, and I the did cast? see it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, first of all, I live in New York, and I'm friends with Jonathan Freeman still, so I wasn't going to miss it. And He's great as Jafar, by the way. Oh, just for our listeners, you need to go see him. <laughs> yes, he's fantastic. I mean, he just is Jafar. He's so perfect. I mean, he's obviously a sweet and nice person, but he's just, like, he relishes that role of the mischievous villain. He's just fantastic. (laughs) He's always been fantastic in that character. Like, I love him as Jafar. So he's such a, a hugely talented person anyway. So, you know, getting to see him live on stage is such a treat. The genie... Oh my gosh, she was great. The girl who played Jasmine loved her. I got to meet her afterwards. We got a couple of pictures together. We were both super oh. excited. <laughs> so, and the Aladdin was great. And they had a song that got cut from the movie that's in the Broadway play that is one of my favorite songs, Proud of Your Boy. So good. It was so cool because I remember it being written for the movie and being so sad when it was cut because I was like, oh, nobody's going to hear this great song. And then it came back for the play. Did you get a chance to speak with Howard Ashman at any point during the recording sessions of Aladdin? And sadly, I didn't because Howard passed away during the casting process. So I, oh. I, I, he was still alive when I was cast. So I, I like to believe he approved of my <laughs> casting as Jasmine. Yeah. Um, I, I never got to meet him, and I only got to know him through other people who knew him. And I know he was a really special man and certainly very talented. We all know that. I just wanted to go back to uh, the Aladdin TV show. I almost missed one of my other questions, but what was that experience like for you to build off of what you had in the film and continue it in the TV series? In one word, it was great, but it was... It's really interesting when you do a TV series because they they don't write all 100 episodes and then you start recording or start filming. They write as they go along, so they start to get to know the actors too. And I really do feel like, you know, the, even in the process of doing the film, like the character becomes me and I become the character and and 
you know, things that are maybe unique to my personality start to find their way into the character. And I think especially when you're doing a series, it's a collaboration with the writers in a lot of ways and, and you influence each other. Did you have a favorite episode where you thought that Jasmine really evolved? Like that was the pinnacle turning point for you saying, you know what? She is an established character. She knows what she wants and this is who she is as a person. You know, I do feel like in the return of Jafar, that was, it was much at the beginning, but I feel like that was when Jasmine got to really be more assertive and, and taking the lead taking on the bad guy and and having initiative and ideas. And, you know, I I felt like in Return of Jafar, that character really started to blossom even more than in the movie. And then it just went from there. And a lot of that TV series was just really fun. Like, some of it wasn't about, you know, the character development, but it was just about, like, silly, fun situations, too, yeah. that they found themselves in with a genie <laughs> and a carpet and a monkey. And Did you get a chance to w- work with Gilbert Godfrey a little bit, too, on the side? Because he really puts us all into the Iago character. What Did, did you get a chance to work off of him at some point? So Gilbert and I actually worked together the most. I, I worked with Gilbert more than anybody on the cartoon series because we both live in New York. So I did, like, Maybe the first half of the series, maybe the first year that we recorded, I was living in Los Angeles. And then I was back in New York, and Gilbert and I were the only two actors in New York, so they would have sessions just for us, phone patching it from Los Angeles to New York. So the director and the the team in Los Angeles would be on the phone, basically, with Gilbert and I and the technician in New York, and we would record our stuff together or like maybe he would start an hour before me and then I would get there and we do a few things together and I would stay longer and finish my stuff we we always overlapped or we thought or we were right in the room together so we spent a lot of time together he's a you riot heard. <laughs> he's a riot and he's also not always that guy he's like a really sweet guy he doesn't want anybody to know so we'll keep that a secret but he's a sweetheart (laughs) between you and I (laughs) yeah (laughs) well I have some fun Disney questions I always ask my guests I call them the fab three questions our Donald question is as a child what Disney film would you always like to watch over and over again okay I would say Snow White for me that was the film I could watch a hundred million times. I love it. And our goofy mm-hmm. question, what mm-hmm. Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Right now, and maybe I'm still, you know, basking in the glow of spending a weekend in Indiana with her, but I would say Belle. She is, oh, such a, such a great character. I think I would want her as my best friend. I think that Belle would have my back. And my Mickey question if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? A whole new world. Lea Salonga sings it so beautifully with Brad Kane. I mean, it's just, I think I probably cry every time I see that part of the movie. It, it's, it's not, it's the song, obviously, and the performances, but the animation through that song is so beautiful where they are riding the carpet over the whole world. It's beautiful. I, I love that song. I love the way it was animated. I love the performances. And I really love the scenes going into and out of that sequence. And one of my favorite lines in the movie that I get to say is, it's all so magical. To me, it encompasses my whole experience being Princess Jasmine. Well, I have to thank you so much for coming on the show, Linda. And I just want to make sure I, I give a, a spot for you to plug anything, if there's anything, any new projects. Besides- well, the most exciting thing that's happening right now is they're re-releasing Aladdin in October of this year. So that's why the big push at D23 and why they're bringing us all together. They're bringing me from London to L.A. to to be there and sort of launch that celebration with the fans. So it's really the biggest thing happening this year and I'm really excited about it. 
I cannot wait. I re- I'm really excited. I hope I get to at least say hello to you if you come off the stage. I'll you just say, like, must. Oh, <laughs> no, you have to. You have to come up and be like, it's Tammy. Oh, you have to come and say hi, though. I, I insist. I'll be there to wish, to want, to wonder, to find the sun through rain and thunder. Light for two. Oh, jeez! Enough is enough! We can't forget about love! Oh, Father. Raja was just playing with him. Weren't you, Raja? You were just playing with that overdressed, self-absorbed Prince Ahmed, weren't you? <laughs>